Hello guys and welcome back. This is part 7 of a series of videos about the minimum data set you need to obtain when you perform an echocardiogram. In this video we will cover the suprasternal view. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start. This is the suprasternal view also known as the suprasternal notch view and I'm going to show you one by one all the measurements you need to obtain when you are in this view. First obtain the suprasternal view and perform a visual assessment of the ascending aorta, aortic arch and descending aorta. In this view, you can also visualize the right pulmonary artery. And don't forget to assess the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. After the visual assessment, you can perform a size assessment. Measure the aortic arch diameter and the descending aorta diameter. Now it's time for the color doppler assessment. Use color doppler on the aortic arch and descending aorta and look for any abnormal flow. Now perform a forward flow assessment. Use continuous wave Doppler on the descending aorta and measure the peak flow velocity. In the presence of aortic regurgitation, you can assess for reverse flow on the descending aorta. Use pulse wave Doppler on the descending aorta and measure the reverse flow velocity. You can also use color M mode to assess for reverse flow. Use color M mode on the descending aorta to look for any reverse flow. This is also a very important view to look for any abnormalities of the aorta. During the visual assessment, look for any aortic dissection. In this image, you can see an aortic dissection flap on the descending aorta. It's also important to look for any aortic coarctation. In these images, you can see a narrowing of the descending aorta with raised forward flow. And to finalize, it's very important to have a look at the aortic arch branches during the visual assessment, as you can encounter something like this. This is an example of a tortuous aorta. Now I'm going to show you on a video, one by one, all the measurements you need to obtain when you are in the suprasternal view. Obtain your suprasternal view and perform a visual assessment of the ascending aorta, aortic arch, descending aorta, and aortic arch branches. Then, proceed to perform a size assessment and measure the aortic arch diameter and descending aorta diameter. This can be done by 2D. Now, use color Doppler on the aortic arch and descending aorta and look for any abnormality in the blood flow. Now assess the forward flow. Use continuous wave Doppler on the descending aorta and measure the peak velocity flow. In the presence of aortic regurgitation, you can look for any abnormal reverse flow on the descending aorta. Use pulse wave Doppler on the descending aorta and measure the peak velocity of the reversal flow. 
or you can also use color M mode on the descending aorta to assess for any diastolic reversal flow. This tool is very useful to assess for any significant reversal flow. Now let's watch some examples of aortic abnormalities. This is an example of an aortic coarctation. Here you can see a narrowing and also turbulent flow in the aorta. And when you modify the angle, the aortic coarctation becomes more evident. Place the cursor on the descending aorta and use continuous wave Doppler to measure the peak velocity of the aortic coarctation. Another abnormality you can find in this view could be an aortic dissection. This is an image of a transesophageal echo where you can see the aortic dissection flap. And to finalize, you may also encounter something like this, a tortuous aorta. This is actually one of the patients I had in one of my clinics. And always remember to use color Doppler. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. See you on another day. Bye.